The Reconquista of Spain can be divided into three distinct phases. The first phase was the era of Moorish supremacy, beginning in 711, when Umayyad forces invaded the Visigoth-ruled Iberian Peninsula. At the Battle of Guadalete, an army of Arabs and Berbers under Tariq ibn Zayyad defeated King Roderick and his Visigoths. The Umayyads quickly overran virtually the whole of Spain. Led by a Visigothic nobleman called Pelayo, some Christians retreated to the remote mountainous northwest, where they established the tiny kingdom of Asturias. The Umayyads tried to dislodge this last Christian holdout, but Pelayo defeated them at the Battle of Covadonia in 722. For nearly 300 years, the Asturian kingdom remained isolated, small, and unable to challenge the hegemonic power of the Moors. But several more small Christian kingdoms began to take shape in the north, such as Navarre and Aragon. In 750, the Abbasids overthrew the Umayyads and established a new caliphate in Damascus. But Moorish Spain, called Al-Andalus, remained loyal to the Umayyads. In 929, a rival Umayyad caliphate was founded in Cordoba, in opposition to the Abbasids. Under the caliphs of Cordoba, Moorish Spain reached its apogee. Every summer, for some three centuries, Umayyad armies would march north to ravage the lands of the Christians, gathering slaves and booty. This culminated in 997, when the Umayyad commander, Al-Mansur, devastated Galicia. Burning the shrine at Santiago de Compostela, the Moors carried the church's bells back to Córdoba to be used as lanterns in the Great Mosque. The hard experiences of these early years honed the Asturians into a stern and warlike people. By 1031, the Caliphate of Córdoba collapsed into many squabbling city-states known as Taifas. Meanwhile, the Asturians had expanded to become the Kingdom of León, which began to dominate the Moors. King Fernando I of León conquered what would become northern Portugal, and his son, Alfonso VI, captured Toledo in 1085. The Leonese kings could now raid with impunity deep into Moorish territory. The Christians seemed poised to retake the whole peninsula. However, Christian dominance in Spain was challenged by the Almoravids, a powerful Berber dynasty from North Africa, which came to dominate the Moorish Taif Estates. In 1086, the Almoravids defeated King Alfonso VI at the Battle of Sagrajas. At this point, the fate of Spain could have gone in either direction. The Moors and the Christians were now very much in a state of struggle to gain the upper hand. We are now well into the second phase of the Reconquista, which we can say began with the collapse of the Caliphate in 1031. This era would continue on into the 12th century. The Christians now controlled much more territory and would continue to push their frontiers farther south. In 1118, Alfonso the Battler, King of Aragon, conquered Zaragoza from the Moors. By mid-century, the power of the Almoravids was broken. But another threat arose from North Africa, the Almohads, rigorous fundamentalist Berber warriors who dominated Moorish Spain in the late 12th century. In 1195, the Almohads won a crushing victory over the King of Castile, Alfonso VIII, at the Battle of Alarcos. Once again, the Christian kingdoms of Spain were in peril. But at the dawn of the 13th century, the final phase of the Reconquista began, the era of Christian dominance. In 1212, Alfonso VIII had his revenge when he and the kings of Aragon and Navarre crushed the Almohads at the Battle of Las Navas de Tolosa. This battle proved to be the turning point in the Reconquista. The Almohads were shattered as a major power. Over the next couple of decades, the Christian kings would conquer most of what remained of Al-Andalus. In 1238, James I of Aragon took Valencia. Fernando III, King of Leon Castile, conquered Córdoba in 1236 and Sevilla in 1248. Fernando III converted Córdoba's great mosque into a cathedral. He also took the bells captured by Almansor centuries earlier and restored them to the Church of Santiago de Compostela. Now all that remained to the Moors was Granada, on the southeastern tip of Spain. For two more centuries, the emirs of Granada would rule this small territory, often paying tribute to the Christian kings. At last, in the late 15th century, Fernando II of Aragon and Isabel I of Castile were joined in marriage. Together, they conquered Granada and thus ended the last trace of Moorish rule on the peninsula.